everybody, it's Jackie with ABC Creations uh, doing a quick little video today to demonstrate how to make my um, heart locket keychains. I know that uh, one of my earlier designs is this and I did not actually have uh, instructions or a video tutorial, so that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I apologize for my setup. I do not have some fancy craft area. I'm actually taking over a portion of my living room. Um, so I'm going to use my PE770 today, and since I'm going to run these anyway, um, I'm going to run the multiple file, which comes in the uh, purchase. You can either do a single or you can do the multi. The multi comes with two. Um, four supplies. What I needed to get was the color of vinyl that I'm going to use, which is this awesome uh, pink from Hudson Textiles. And I'm going to use a matching thread color because I just... You know, I'm OCD like that. Uh, a pair of scissors, some uh, snap tabs. I get these. These are the 20 long prong uh, from Cam Snaps. Two uh, one inch diameter O rings is what I prefer to use. I have my Dritz press uh, inside of a stand or a block that I got um, from, as you can see here. Sorry. Gigi Designs in Wood, and this one specifically is a narrow front, and it's for a Babyville. Um, it does work with my cam press, and it does work with the Dritz. And then I can't find my owl, so um, I'm going to use my crocodile to poke my holes, probably. And then, last but not least, you're going to need a clear uh, vinyl or a clear plastic, whatever you want to call it. To be honest with you, I got this huge... Um, I don't know if you can see it here, this huge folded tablecloth of clear vinyl or clear plastic at Walmart. Uh, and it is actually literally is a shower curtain or a tablecloth. I can't remember which one. And it's it's quite thick. So um, I don't know if you can see it, but this works really well. So it's a lot cheaper than having to buy clear vinyl and it works just as well. So, I'll go ahead and thread up my machine and show you how I load it uh, with the design. Let's see if I can get this set up. I apologize again. Not a professional camera artist here. So, again, you know, we're using the pink. So, I like to put, when I get into um, number three here, I like to put a little tension up here on my thread so that I can feel it click in like that. And then I also like to do the same when I pull down on four. So I hold the thread here and kind of pull down so I feel it lock or hear that snap. And I've always gotten into the habit of dropping my foot and raising it right back up because I don't want to be one of those people you see on the videos with a finger in the needle or the needle in the finger. Okay, so the machine's all threaded up. So next, we're going to load up our design. Um, I already have mine on my USB here, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hit this. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> we're going to hit the USB button here. And this is the design. Like I said, I'm doing the multi, so it's going to have two in one. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to tell the machine to load it. And there it is. So first step is going to be, let's see if I can move my machine here. Uh, the first step is going to be your placement on stabilizer. So I'm using here a medium weight, uh, stabilizer. I usually get it in a huge roll on uh, Amazon and I get it, I want to say 100 yards from Thread Art, I think it is. I'll have to double check. I'll put a link down and below. Um, but these, I have pre cut all of this entire roll to fit my 5x7 hoops for my PE770. So um, that's what I did. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. And again, this is just going to run a placement stitch. Um, for the design on stabilizer. And since I'm running two, it's going to jump to the second one now. Yours, if you're doing one, you'd be done by now and you can move forward. Uh, basically, the second step is going to be we're going to lay down our material on top of the hoop. And that is going to be for um, 
for the top or the inside of these uh, lockets. So what you're looking at here is the actual inside of the locket. All right, so placement is done. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, cut the vinyl so that it fits on top of the hoop uh, perfectly and place it right on top. So I'll show you how I do that next. Just a second here. Actually, my vinyl is a little bit short. I apologize. This isn't one of my bigger vinyl pieces. Uh, she does have two versions. She has these, which are, um, I want to say, I'm not sure what size these are, to be honest, but she does have the bigger like 8x10 or 8x11s, um, which those I can cut in half, basically, and then you lay one on top and then one on the bottom, but these are a little bit shorter, so I'm just going to stick this in here. I have two pieces just in case, so I mean, this is literally it. I'm just floating the entire piece. I'm not doing anything special. If you're worried about it hitting the machine on this side, uh, you know, pull it over here and do it this way, so that way it's just rolling along with your arm or your panograph. Just make sure that your entire design is covered and you should be good. So drop your foot and this is your tack down. So what it's doing is it's tacking down your fabric or material. That little jump right there you see in the middle is actually to help it to bend when you're folding it closed to snap it shut. Now this step is step number three uh, and step number three is your placement to show you where you are going to need your clear vinyl. So what I like to do is literally uh, trim up these stitches here and then I will go back in and um, run the little placement for that. So I'm going to pause the video, get that set up and ready. All right, and I'm back. So I've gone ahead and trimmed up all these uh, stitches, the jump stitches. Uh, if you have a multi-needle machine, some of those actually won't actually appear. They will cut before they move. Uh, I've cut out some tiny little pieces of clear. I've cut out two of those because you're going to need one for each of the hearts. And they're relatively the same size. I mean, you don't have to be perfect. You just want them to cover the heart enough so that you can trim it up later. So I'm going to run this hack down. And this is going to show me where to place that vinyl, the clear. and it's going to jump to the second one that we're creating. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is where you see this nice little tack line uh, or placement line, I apologize, we are going to put our clear vinyl over that. So basically it's going to sit like this. Now, one thing you do want to do is make sure that your vinyl is as clean as it can be because obviously you don't want any dirt on the inside. It's going to be hard to clean it once you have it on there. So what I'm going to do now, just for um, my own safety security reasons, I'm going to tape down the clear so that way I don't have to worry about it shifting or moving while I'm taking the video. So give me just a second. I'm going to place the vinyl and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back and as you can see, I've got all of my clear vinyl tape down. So we're going to go ahead and run this uh, step, which is number four. Number four is actually going to run 
the tack down of the clear. So we'll go ahead and drop our foot and get started. Okay, so now here what I like to do before I finish the last step which is putting on um, the underside or the back fabric for the front when you close it is I like to cut the trim stitches um, which is this big jump stitch here and then I like to cut the vinyl across the clear vinyl off and across and trim it so that's what I'm gonna do next and I will be right back hey guys I'm back so here is what it looks like after I've trimmed the clear on the hearts and as you can see the top is left open um, so you can fit your picture in on both of these hearts here and if you can see that here my fingers are a little big there we go so this is where your pictures go okay so the final and last step as you can see on the screen is number five and what this is going to do is we are going to flip over our hoop and you can see your outline still on there from the placement and everything else you've stitched here we are going to put our backing or our um, fronts so that when you fold them in half, this will be the other side. So what I like to do here is um, take another piece of uh, vinyl and um, I clearly cannot go over the sections that I lock in my hoop. So I'm going to have to do this the opposite way this time. And I like to just basically tape down my corners here onto the hoop. Um, you can actually, if you have better tape than I do, you can probably tape it down to your stabilizer. Um, mine should work, actually. This stuff is pretty good. I got it at um, Joanne. I thought it was really cute for having all of the measurements because I use it also to tape it down on my table to cut. All right, so this is what it should look like. And then you basically are just going to put it back in the hoop, uh, lock it in, and run that last step. So I'll set this down for a second here this in. All right. So you have your bottom piece here, top piece here, and we're going to run the final. If you're doing one, this should be your end point. Oh, I apologize. It has one more stitch. Again, this is to help that tab bend when you want to uh, close the heart locket. I forgot that was on there. As I said, this is one of my earlier designs, so I apologize uh, if I forget some of my own steps.
As soon as the machine stops, I'll go ahead and remove the design from the hoop and begin to trim and cut around each of these. And then I will come back and show you how to place your snaps. All right, be back in just a minute, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. So for the purpose of this video, I've only cut out one. Uh, as you can see too, one thing I wanted to mention is the point of the heart comes down just a little bit uh, close to your vinyl. So when you are trimming your clear vinyl, be sure to trim on a little bit of a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a little bit of a dip, you know, not straight across. You want to kind of curve it in just a little bit so that you miss that little point. Um, I think it gives it a lot of character and I really didn't want to move the point of the heart. Uh, I was afraid that it would take away from the heart shape if I raised it too high. So next I'm going to show you how I place my snaps so that this can work um, as your photo holder. So this piece is your tab that's going to either um, you can have it fold over like this or you can have it fold in and snap like this. Um, whichever you prefer is your preference, but note that if you do it one way or the other, you're gonna have to place your snap in a different spot. So uh, basically, if you're going over like this, then your snap needs to be uh, with your uh, prong from the outside in. If you're gonna do it this way, um, where your, your tab is on the inside, then your prong needs to be over here facing with the sticking point out. So that way it can um, grab. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, the overway like this and we'll go from there. So basically what I am going to do then is I'm going to just kind of eyeball where it's gonna be um, for this one, which would be you know right about here and then you know, right about there. So if I would have my owl poker, I probably would have grabbed the two layers like this, separated out the back, uh, something like this, and just stuck it through both layers. And then that way I wouldn't have to worry about matching it up. Uh, but because I don't have the um, poker for some reason, I don't know if one of my kids took off with it or I just lost it in my pile of creative chaos, but it's not here. So we're gonna do it this way. Um, I do have a crocodile, which I'm gonna use right now. And I'm just gonna pop a hole through it probably, uh, just cause I don't have any other choice right now. So, like that, got a nice little hole. And then I'm gonna do the same over here. Uh, let's see if we can get you kinda lined up here. I apologize. Uh, normally it would be perfectly lined up. You could even take like, once you get a hole in this one, you could actually take like a pen or a pencil and kind of mark it on the inside. And then that way when you open it up right here, it would be there. So they're not gonna line up perfectly uh, ever. I mean, unless you're really good at that. <laughs> I don't know anybody who can. Uh, and then same thing with up here, you're gonna wanna do your snaps for your key ring. So I'm gonna do one here. And for myself, I just kind of eyeball it. Um, and another one right about there. Just like that. So, got my holes popped for where I'm gonna put these uh, snaps. So, now I'm gonna set the snaps. So I'm gonna put one here. Um, mine's probably a little close to the edge. You might wanna bring yours in just a little bit. I apologize. Again, it's not about perfection for me right now. This is just to show you guys the video. Uh, and this, and then I'm going to press it. I apologize again, I'm a right-handed here. So, let's see if I can do it like this for you. All right. Okay, so we've got one on. Then again, we are going to, I put it backwards, so I'm actually gonna have to go this way now, sorry. Um, so if you, want the, if you want your snap to look like this on the outside, you're gonna have to do the inside one, I apologize. I meant to do it this way for you guys, but uh, so this one's in like this, so this one's gonna have to be out. So we're gonna do uh, this one like this. So as you can see, it'll, it'll go like this. And since I used, um, a male here, I'm gonna have to use a female here. So the male and the female can connect. All right, so I'm gonna press this one now. And I'll show you in a second how it looks when it's flat so you know what how to line it up. All right, so 
This is the back side without the clear. So you'll have one facing one way, one facing the other way. Clear side, same thing. You're gonna have the one facing one way on one side and one facing the other on the other side. So now if you were to fold, let me see if I can move my hands here with this camera, sorry guys. So now if you were to fold this one in, this one will clip right to it. And I'm like kind of way off here on my calculations. I should have probably brought that in. So it'll look just like this, okay? And then it just snaps open and closed. And if I didn't put it so close to the edge, it wouldn't be as hard. <laughs> All right, so there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the top and bottom here. So this will be for your, um, your O-ring. Uh, again, you're going to need a male and a female. I personally like to put my male on the bottom. Um, for some reason, those are the ones that like to pop off first. So male. And then I'm going to press it. And then we're going to do a female on the top. And these two are going to face the same direction. Why? Because you're going to take this and you're going to snap it like that. So these two are going to have both facing the back or the ground or the floor or your table or whatever. And again, we're going to do a male and a female because they're going to connect. Okay, so now everything is on. I mean, this is, again, just the basics. I apologize. I'm, I'm not trying to be in a hurry or anything, but it's one of my very first videos. Uh, this is too close to the edge. You'll want to scoot that in just a little bit. I apologize. A little nervous being on video here. Um, and then this is your O-ring. So you are just going to put it right in the middle of these two, and you're going to clip it together like this. And now you have your keychain. You can put your picture in here. And when you're all finished, you just close her up and attach her to your key ring. And this is how you make my heart locket. Uh, if you wanted to uh, take a picture template, what you could do realistically is, you know, lay it over this and kind of outline it um, either this way or however. Um, there's plenty of several different ways you could do this. Actually, the best way you could probably do it is print out the stitch guide that I sent in the files and where this placement stitch is, um, you know, like the first picture I want to say it is in the whole st uh, stitch guide, print it out and then just cut your picture out per where the um, placement is going to go. And then it should just slide right in. You want it obviously just a hair smaller so it goes in, but yeah. That pretty much covers it. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. If you liked the video or didn't like the video, let me know as well. What do you think could improve or not improve? I mean, obviously, placement of my nap tab, probably. <laughs> um, but if you'd like this video and want to see more, let me know so that I can, um, you know, start carving out some time during the day to do them and make sure that I get uh, somewhat better at showing you how they work. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you. Uh, if not, I will continue to just do basic PDF instructions and uh, or eventually hire someone else to do videos. All right, guys, take care.